Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Dracalia Lost video. Today's video, we're going to be going over the new Gala Banner. I was so close to tweeting out, um, no Gala Banner this month, them <laughs> releasing Mars before the Fire Emblem Heroes, uh, event was a real dick move. But it turns out, like, no, whether there is a Gala Banner this month, just wait a little bit. But he's not alone, there's actually three other characters, so I think it's gonna be a straight up, like, it's gonna be interesting. We're, I'm gonna, let's go into it. That's what's in today's video. We're gonna uh, talk about them, um, read what they do. Maybe I'll give a little bit of what I, my thoughts on them, and if you want to share your thoughts on these units too, which one are you excited for? I think the main one's gonna be Leaf, but there's a lot of people who also like Journey to the West. So that's today's video. Let's get into it. Um, what is Galadragalia? We already know. Uh... Okay, let me just be sure. Okay, now. By the way, my dog is barking at drug dealers, so there's nothing I can do to stop him. Featured adventurer Galileaf. By the honor of the White Sparrow, I shall cut a way forward for his majesty. Captain of the Alberian Royal Guard, an exemplar of the knights, his love for his country is exceptionally strong. A brilliant swordsman, but he's a brilliant swordsman, he also serves as an instructor in a way of the blade to the royal children. Feathered Gale deals wind damage to the surrounding enemies and reduces their defense by 5% for 20 seconds. This defense reduction will not stack. If this skill is used during shielding stance, a variant called Sparrow's Protection will be used instead. Sparrow's Protection increases the user's defense by 60% for 15 seconds. Pinion Slash deals wind damage to the enemy in a line and reduces their strength by 5% for 20 seconds. This strength reduction effect will not stack. Poison foes take extra damage. If this skill is used during shielding stance, a variant called the Parrying Slash will be used instead. Parrying Slash deals wind damage to the enemy directly ahead and inflicts poison. Uh, damage is increased against foes with reduced defense. And then his co-op ability is Reduced Strength and Defense Punisher. Wow, 8% if they're suffering from either of those. Wow. Chain co-op ability, wind strength, double buff, 10%. Um, if the team member is attuned to win, increase their strength by 10% for 15 seconds. Debuff skill time 20%, increase the duration of bleeding and debuff skills. De 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 increase the duration of bleeding and wow, bleeding and debuff skills that reduce strength and defense by 20%. White Sparrow Vow 2 reduces susceptibility to freeze and bog. And flurry strength 20%, increases strength by 20% when the combo count is 15 or higher. Yeah, all right. Galileaf. So I knew for, I think everyone knew that he was going to be sword. Uh, the thing that I ended up always thinking that some people thought that he was going to be um, light. Um, I never thought he would be light because one, he would kind of screw over the prince. And I feel like if anything, they would don't want to screw over the first year anniversary character by introducing another light sword. But it seems like they have no problem screwing over Galaranzel, who was already in a very, very, very bad um, situation. And I feel like Galileaf is kind of... He's done it. He's kind of killed off whatever. To be fair, Galaranzel was already not anything else. And now Leaf is here to completely destroy whatever remained of him, which was a very tiny bit of him. How good is he? Uh, that's another good question. I know that... Uh, in East Sicilia, I believe that's how you pronounce it, the, the Agita for water. Uh, she does have a defense thing, but he doesn't seem to be able to take away, like, a defense up or um, something like that. He just lowers defense. Could be really good. I'm interested to try him out for sure. I need to see kind of more of him in action before I actually know how good he is. I, kinda, I like that he has this co-op ability, though. That seems pretty cool. Um... Yeah, he seems like he could be, in theory, especially with, like, all this. Does he even inflict bleed now that I look at him? I don't know. We'll find out uh, later. But let's go on to the next unit. Radiant Zhuang... Zhuang Zhang? <laughs> I like how both in uh, Fate Granddaughter and in Dragalia, I have problems pronouncing this name. Zhuang Zhang? Um... A Quilan sealer who uses the power of the relic, Xia, to manipulate light. Her kindness drove her to break the sealer code and take an active role in the world at large. Her recent worry is her inability to get let go of her pupil. 
Surging Light deals light damage to the enemies in a line, reduces their strength by 10% for 10 seconds, and inflicts Paralysis. If this skill is used after the user's charge gauge was filled, a variant called a Bright Flash will be used instead. Bright Flash, bright, bright flash. Bright flash deals light damage to the enemies in a line and reduces their strength by 25% for 10 seconds. Paralyzed foes take extra damage. Coalescent Light partially fills the user's charge gauge and adds 20% to the user and nearby teammate's shadow resistance for 10 seconds. This shadow resistance increase will not stack. If this skill is used after the user's charge, uh, charge gauge was filled, a variant called Light's, Light Stream will be used instead. Light Stream increases the strength of a user and nearby allies by 20% for 15 seconds. In addition, the Light Stream adds 40% to the user and nearby enemy shadow resistance and inspires the entire team. This shadow resistance increase will not stack. Skill damage 15%, light HP 80% equals shadow resistance 6%, and then she has Giant's Radiance, fills 100% of the skill gauge at the start of the quest, and grants the users a charge gauge. The charge gauge fills with Codalescent Light, it's used as the amount of charge gauge fills in increase based on the number of team members in Codalescent Light's area of effect when it's used. When the gauge is completely filled, Surge Light's Codalescent skill and the user's force strike will each be upgraded once. These upgrades will not stack and will be consumed on use. The upgraded force strike will lower foe's paralysis resistance. This resistance reduction effect will not stack. Poison resistance 100% and debuff skill time 20% increases duration of bleeding and debuff. Wow, just like Leaf. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Seems on paper pretty good. A lot of support. If you did not get the limited, uh, which a lot of people didn't, the limited Fire Emblem Hero uh, unit Peony, uh, then this would be a perfectly good substitute, I think. Uh, we're gonna have to wait to see how she's doing because with Peony, she was super crazy busted on paper because of her skills. And then her actual, she still is, I think, the one of the highest DPS light, but they very much like kept her in check. So I kind of want to wait and see for the same thing to see how her, I believe mods is what they refer it as. Kind of wait, want to wait and see to see how that is, because yeah, after that experience of being like, this is insane. If she has even anything remotely resembling an extremely good mod, then she's gonna be busted. And it turned out she had a very low mod, so it made her very good <laughs> as opposed to. Galaclea levels of, oh my god, the game is destroyed. But I want her, for sure, because it's Zhuang, and it's Radiant, and I would love to have her. Don't really need her, now that I think about it, <laughs> but it's fine. Alright. Okay. Zuobush. Can't pronounce this name, either. Military man and a former commander in the Taiwa army. Once arrogant, he reformed after being rebuked by Zhuang Zhang, and now travels with her uninvited. He's a devoted husband and often mentions his wife in glowing terms. Ooh, this is actually shareable. And it's five. Deals light damage to the enemies directly ahead and inflicts stun. The lower the user's HP, the more damage this skill does. Macho charge makes the user unhealable for 10 seconds. If the user's HP is below 30% of max HP when using this skill, increase the user's strength by 20% for 10 seconds. If the user's HP is above or equal to 30% of the max HP, reduce their HP to 20% of max HP and grant them a one-use divergent shield that nullifies damage less than 20 per 80%, not 20, 80%, nullifies damage less than 80% of the user's maximum HP. Divergent shields can stack with ordinary shields. Defense, 15%. Chain co ability, light above 10 hits equals shadow resistance 10%. Rampaging Boar 2 grants the users a unique force strike that deals increased damage to paralyzed, paralyzed enemies and has three increasingly powerful charge levels in addition. They are immune to knockback while charging their force strike. Curse resistance 100% and resilient offense 10% increases strength by 10% for the remainder of the quest when the user's HP drops to 30%, three times per quest. Wait, so increases strength by 10% for the remainder of the quest when the user... So he can get 30% for basically using, yeah, using macho charge three times, or I guess actually falling below that much. This guy seems pretty good. This seems solid as hell. They even gave him um, the Monster Hunter mechanic, which I'm glad that... Which is, um... I don't know if they're the only ones that have it, but the only ones that come to mind are Monster Hunter characters where they actually charge their Force Strike. Um, that's why Hunter Cerise is so crazy broken. Uh, the problem is, is that he's an Axe, and Axe charges their Force Strike slow. 
So we'll see if his unique force strike maybe is a little bit faster. Uh, but I think this guy could end up being pretty fun to use, actually. That's my opinion on him, anyway. Are you prepared to be my companion, Tua Xuan Gong Zhu? A dragon famed for her peerless beauty, her intimidating rage earned her the nickname Rekisha, which comes from a similar word for a vicious demon. She is married to Nui Wo Wow, and clearly runs their relationship. Is this the first time a dragon's been married? Okay, so it is possible to marry a giant dragon. This is all very good news to me. Oh, it's Princess Iron Fan. The, I, I don't recognize the characters by their names. I recognize them by what they do because of Journey into the West. Energizing Fan deals light damage to the enemies in a line and energizes the entire team. Once energized, using an applicable skill will reset the adventurer's energy level to zero. And she's HP 30. Oh, and Skill Haste. Nice. She could be solid. Uh, Light doesn't have a skill haste, obviously, because she's the first one here, and both of those things seem pretty good to me. Alright, now there is a video. I am going to switch over. Reminder, the videos can't have any music in it because I get copyright struck if they do. So let's go over to them right now. Alright, here it is. What the hell was that? The White Sparrow conquers and then returns. The heart of Alberia is the blood of the dragons. So long the bloodline continues, the Imperials can raise every city to the ground and never defeat us. <gasps> my life is a protection of the royal line. It is everything to me as much as you have not left my thoughts for a moment. I am a knight of Alberia, and the knights aim to bring protect to the royal family and deliver them from hardship. This is a very good song playing you can't hear right now, but... The prince is a beacon of light, though as yet of the meager one but one which exudes the radiance we need to guide in these dark days. Dun 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 bon da do ba boo. By your leave, I'll be at your side, for I will follow you to the ends of the world itself. Bum ba 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 na na na. Dun dun ba 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 da ba o. Bee ba 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 o. Dum 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 ba boom ba da ba o. This is the Jacalia song. The splendor of the legendary zone lights in the path of the destiny. Indebted general. I really wish they wouldn't copyright me for using their music. Let's go. I'm going to honor my debt and see it repaid in full. Ooh, that's a very fun. Can... I might have actually missed Ravishing. God damn. That's a huge dragon. That is a huge dragon. Holy God. Five parents rate will be boosted from 4% to 6%. To yeah, as expected. All right, let's go back to the actual game. Sorry for the singing. All right, I'm back. Before we leave today's episode, video, episode, whatever, I just want to mention the fact that it looks like this banner is going to have four featured units, which if you have you ever summoned on, um, I believe it was Fire Emblem Heroes the first time it came out, which had three featured five stars, it was the worst experience in the world. Um, obviously, Gallic Regalia has better rates than it, but honestly, it was already very hard to pull a single um, Galley unit. Um, when they were the only thing featured. Now the funny thing is, is that if you do end up playing Galilee super early, uh, the temptation has always been for people to keep summoning on Gala banners because there's so much good things in a Gala banner. Because it's the, it's honestly the best banner in the entire game. No bones about it. Um, the problem was is that if you caught the featured Gala unit after you caught the Gala featured unit. You would usually only get the Gala unit on repeat over and over again. So I'm kind of wait and see how Gala Banner kind of is. It's a very weird thing to do because I honestly feel like, how long is this going to last? Uh, okay, my bad. I completely screwed that up. The the Journey to the West guys are after Gala Banner, so everything's going to be cool, everything's going to be fine. Ignore everything I said. I'm so glad I read up. Ooh, but I did say that in the beginning, so I am going to have to put up a comment below saying I read later on at the end of the video. They're not all in one banner. Cool, 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 cool. Um, 
I should you summon for him? I'm sure as hell gonna be summoning for him. Ignore everything I said, I am gonna be summoning for him. Will I get him? No. Because the chances of actually pulling a Gala Banner unit is next to impossible. Don't take it the fact that I've had a lot of good luck in my summon videos to actually take it as like, hey, this is actually super easy to get. They're not. They're super hard to get. If you want true proof of this, go to the Prince summon for the first year anniversary of Dragalia Lost. It is almost 40 minutes long, I think. I think it's close to the 30. Um, where I spend literally everything I have for one copy of the Prince. No, I don't think I even get the Prince in that video. I think what I get is a dupe Galamim, and it was horrible. It was awful. So, as always, use caution when summoning. Galabanner might be every month, so think before you summon is the nice way of saying what I'm trying to say. Until next time, everyone, I'm Wilkie, and remember, if you like this video, you should leave a like, comment about how you feel about the, the units I just literally talked about here, um, who you're looking forward to, and you can also subscribe to me if you want more Dragalia stuff. I also play Pokemon, Silent Hill, other gacha games in general, so I do a bunch of stuff. So until next time, everyone, goodbye.